everyone, what's up? My name is Joss and welcome back to my channel Squibbles Reads. So I am burnt out AF from doing year-end videos. Those things are no joke. So today I wanted to do a little bit more of a chill video. This is the third video in my series where I recommend books based on your Hogwarts house. I've done Slytherin and Ravenclaw already, so if you missed those, I will link them in the down bar below. And today I will be recommending books for people who are Gryffindor. I think all of these books are pretty stellar, so if you are not a Gryffindor, I think you will enjoy these all the same. Gryffindors are typically courageous, determined, and daring and they stand up for what they believe is right. Other people who are not Gryffindors often see them as being pointlessly heroic or I guess in a little bit more of a negative light stroking their own egos. This list of books was both easy and hard to make because when we read about a protagonist from their point of view everything that they're doing is right and just and involves some risk taking in their eyes. Especially if the author tries to make them obviously sympathetic or someone that we as readers want to root for. So today I wanted to dig a little bit deeper. The books that I've chosen all revolve around bravery in terms of agency and voice. Even when everyone around them says that what they're doing will cause an unnecessary disturbance of the status quo. Okay, let's go. The first book that I'm recommending is The Story Hour by Thriti Amagrar. You will see the re a review of this in my wrap up at the end of the month. This is about a woman named Lakshmi. She is married to a terribly abusive and controlling man. She goes to seek therapy from a counselor named Maggie. Over the course of several sessions, the nature of their relationship shifts from a solely therapeutic relationship to more of a friendship. The book focuses on Lakshmi and her worldview and perspective because we get some first person perspective from her. Apart from that, there is also talk about ethics in mental health professions, beliefs, and ethnicity. The reason why I think this is a Gryffindor book is Lakshmi had to demonstrate so much bravery and act against the grain even when she was reaching out for help. Because she comes from a background where mental health is stigmatized and often written off as something that is not health related and therefore should be kept quiet. And because she was in an abusive and controlling relationship, we also see shifts in her mindset throughout the book and she feels tentative yet courageous to question what has been ingrained in her mind for so many years. The status quo, unfortunately, in her relationship is the cycle of harm and, and secret keeping. And to break free of that, she used her voice and ultimately went to seek help to move towards wellness with her therapy sessions with Maggie. Up next, we have Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This I included in my favorite and best books of 2017. This is about Tanner. He is bisexual and he moved from California to a small town in Utah called Provo, which has a large Mormon population. He was out in California, but he hasn't told anyone in Provo that he's bisexual including his best friend Autumn. She dares him to take his high school seminar class where they are to write a book over the course of the semester. The person who is auditing the class is a student from the previous year who has made it really big in the book industry called Sebastian. He walks in and Tanner is immediately attracted to him. I think this is a Gryffindor book because Tanner is grappling with the sudden shuddering of freedom ex of expression that he had in California and to really be himself when he moved to Utah. The novel that he writes for this class has a lot to do with his own life and I think that the courage in this book revolves around that. So I used to write personally and because of a variety of reasons that I don't really want to get into, writing is no longer a part of my life. But when I put words down on paper, even if they're not directly reflective of my own mindset and experience, they're reflective of at least my perspective about my character. There's a certain kind of determination when you are writing, creating art, creating music, creating really anything, that you are birthing something from your own mind or expressing yourself in some way. Especially for Tanner, moving to a place where he is afraid to express himself openly, we see both his hesitation and and his courage when he is writing his novel throughout this entire book and I think it is so beautiful. And my third recommendation is The Difficult Women by Roxane Gay. You guys know that Roxane Gay is one of my favorite people ever. This is a book of fictional vignettes or short stories all about women who can be perceived as difficult by disrupting the status quo. The women in this collection have all demonstrated perseverance and endured some kind of adversity. Unfortunately, sometimes in these really terrible, I guess, content warning for abuse and maltreatment in their relationship. These are women who are sometimes deemed difficult, for example, for wanting their voice heard and not be discriminated against in the workplace. So there is one story in this collection where there is an African American woman and she's an engineer and she experiences both sexism and racism in her workplace. I think this is a Gryffindor book because some people, especially some men, think that these women's voices are pointless. But it really is hard as hell to go to work every single day when you feel like your voice is not being heard. Things that aren't even in some people's awareness whatsoever take vast amounts of effort and determination from day to day from other people, including some of the women in this collection. My next recommendation probably comes as no surprise, also one of my best books of 2017, and this is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is about 79 year old badass bisexual Cuban woman Evelyn Hugo Ago, she was a famous Hollywood movie star. She's now retired and has an extensive body of work behind her, but even so, people mostly talk about her relationship history, specifically her seven marriages. She refuses to give anyone an interview until she requests 
that Monique, who is a newer writer at the magazine that she works at to write her tell-all biography. This book basically consists of Evelyn telling her life story to Monique where she goes to her apartment day after day and Monique's reactions and experiences when she goes home every day after meeting with Evelyn. To me, this is a quintessential Gryffindor book because throughout Evelyn's whole life, everyone is so hyper-focused on defining her by her relationship and quite frankly, the men in her life literally and figuratively writing her history. Her being actress, I think, is metaphorical for her playing a role that other men have written for her. And this book is her retelling and rewriting her history in the way that it should be told from her own perspective. She's taking her agency and her voice back, and she also showed a ton of determination in the film industry when there was a ton of racism and sexism, and she made it big by doing whatever it took to be seen and heard. Monique is a more beginner reporter, and she's also biracial, and her dilemma throughout the book is whether she wants to be brave and step forward and take this huge monumental task of writing this really cool woman's tell-all biography. And it's important because a lot of people at her workplace expect her to stay small and not have a voice. Next we have The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne, another book that you will see in my wrap-up at the end of the month. But we follow a man named Cyril starting in the 1940s in Ireland, moving all the way through the year 2015. At the beginning of the book, there are some serious homophobic beliefs that are permeating throughout society, and Cyril, who is a gay man, navigates society knowing that these beliefs about his identity are so rampant. The Gryffindor characteristic of determination in him and the other people in the book takes us through what it's like to be a gay man whose life spanned these years in Ireland. We see determination in people fighting for their rights, medical and otherwise, during the AIDS epidemic. How eventually, same-sex marriage was legalized, but not until after a long and arduous battle of people continuing to try and fight for their rights for marriage when time after time they're being told that they are pointless and unnecessary. There was a period of time in this book where unfortunately women were kind of objectified and used for men to prove themselves that they are not in relationships with other men because they are terrified of the stigma and the way that they will be treated by other people who have homophobic beliefs. Which is just really and truly so sad for, for really everyone involved. The characters have to have great amounts of determination and courage to speak out again and again throughout these parts of history where society is so staunchly working against them. So that is it for my Gryffindor book recommendations today. Leave me a book that you think that people in the House of Gryffindor might enjoy down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!